Okay guys, and welcome back. So this is a 2D kinematics problem. It's the next example we have. And basically you are holding a fire hose around the ground and you're pointing it at an angle so that the water that comes out of it comes out, makes like a little arc, and then it lands two and a half feet away from you from where you're holding the nozzle. And you just need to figure out what the angle needs to be in order for it to, for the water to land two and a half meters away from you. So you're given the distance the water needs to travel, and you're also given the speed of the water as it comes out of the nozzle. So first thing we have to do is draw a picture. So let's see, we have the ground over here, and here's the spout, the nozzle, and the water comes out. There we go. And it lands right there. And this is 2.5 meters away, right? So from here to here is 2.5 meters. There we go. Okay, so let's see. The given we have is the V sub naught. That's equal to 6.5 meters per second. And we know that our range here, so our delta x, is going to be 2.5 meters. So let's just call it distance. So the distance is equal to 2.5 meters. Well, this actually is kind of simple. If you guys remember the range formula, it looks like this. Range is, it was derived in your books. Range is equal to V sub naught quantity squared times sine of two theta all over G. Okay, so this will give you the total distance from here to here if you know what the velocity is and what the angle is. I don't like the way that angle is written. There, that looks prettier. So this problem is super easy if we know what this formula is here. So all we have to do is just solve for theta and we get our answer, which is what we're gonna do. So let's just call R D. Right? So I'm gonna erase this and just let this be D. And now we can multiply by the reciprocal of V sub naught squared over G and isolate the sine two theta. So let's do that. So we'll get sine two theta is equal to, will be D times G over V sub naught squared. So notice here I've got sine two theta. And after I plug stuff into here, actually, you know what? Let's go ahead and do that. There's something I notice right now. I'll just tell you. What I, what I notice is this. I'm going to put in a positive G here because, uh, you know, if it's negative, if, if gravity is negative, this will make the answer, well, this will make the right side of the equation negative. And there's nothing down below here. I know everything's happened up here, which means that if I'm dealing with the unit circle, I'm going to be in two different quadrants for a positive value for this because sine two theta is equal to a positive value. Meaning if I, if I treat this like sine of beta is equal to some kind of positive number. Okay. That means that in quadrants one and two, my sine value is going to be my sine of the angle value is going to be positive, right? So let me start plugging things in. So for the D I've got 2.5 meters. Uh, I'm just going to leave the units off because technically it's just a height here, like on the, on the y axis. And then this will be times 9.8 meters per second squared, which is the gravitational constant. And this is going to be over V sub naught quantity squared. So that's going to be 6.5 squared. Okay, this simplifies to 98 over 169, which is about 0 0.579881. Let's just say this is about 0 0.6, right? This is not our final answer. This is just a result we have for sine of two theta. So let me rewrite that again. I'll just use this right here. So we've got two theta is about 0 0.6. Okay, so this is what I was talking about. Here's quadrants one and quadrant two, 
right? And if you guys are rem- well, if you guys are familiar with the uh, mnemonic, uh, all students take calculus. So sine would be positive, and so sine of two theta. Let's just pretend it was this here, right? And if that's the case, there is a point it reaches over here, which is about 0.6, right? So if, if one was up here, that was one. 0.6 would be a little more than halfway, which means that there is a second answer right here, right? There's another angle. So you have this angle here, and then you've got this angle over here, right? So this one here, this would be like our beta one. And this other angle here would be like our beta 2, right? So we're going to need two different answers for this thing here, right? And that makes sense, right? Because let's take a look here on the right. You know, if you're holding the water spout at an angle, right? The water comes out and then it hits, hits a point on the ground here, right? But if you hold the spout up a little bit higher, first of all, this one comes out like that. This one at a higher angle, the water will come out, reach a maximum height, and then come back down, right? So that is why we have two solutions here. So if that's the case, then the first one will be beta. So this one will be beta 1 right here. And the second one will be beta 2. Beta 2, technically, you could just say it's one, well, beta 2 would just be 180 minus beta 1, right? And that makes sense, right? Because if this is 180 degrees over here and you subtract this, I guess you, you could think of this as a reference angle, it would be the same on this side here, right? So if you just subtract this part right here, this angle, which is technically, well, I guess I could write that in here. Technically, this angle, beta 1, is the same as this one here. So if you subtract this from 180, then you'll end up with beta 2, right? So that's where we get that right there. You'll see how that works out. Okay, so let's go back to this part here. So we've got sine of 2 theta is equal to 98 over 169. And we take the sine inverse of this and we'll end up with 2 theta is equal to sine inverse of 98 over 169. I am not going to put in decimal points because I don't want to, I want to try to keep everything uh, in fraction form if possible, so that way I can eliminate truncating the uh, decimal representation of the answer, because then it makes the errors bigger. So for this right here, this is what I'm going to get. Uh, 2 theta is equal to sine inverse, and you plug this into your calculator, and you'll find that this equals 35.44 degrees. Make sure you guys are in degree mode for this. Okay, so that's 35.44 degrees. Now the second answer you would get, so this would be like our beta one, remember? So beta two would be 180 minus this answer here. So that means the second angle we'd get would be 144.557 degrees. Okay, since this is two theta, we can divide by two on both sides. So that way we'll have theta is equal to 17 point seven two degrees and the second one would be seventy two point two eight degrees so that's basically um, I guess I could just write this as theta is approximately equal to uh, we could just call it 18 degrees or 72 degrees there and that's it so this was the simple way of doing the problem. Now what we're going to do is look at a more rigorous way of doing the problem where we don't know this formula here. Okay, so let's do this on the next page. So the same things we have. We know the given is V sub naught is equal to 6.5 meters per second. And we know that our delta X is equal to 2.5 meters. You know, I'm going to try to keep this short because I know you guys have other problems to work on. So basically you have this kind of shape here, and the particle reaches a high point. So you know this is 2.5 meters across here, right? Okay, so if you look at this right here, the velocity, the upward velocity changes, right? It gets slower and slower and then reaches this particle, basically this segment of water as it travels along this, this projectile path here. 
if you look at it from behind, so let's say you were back here, right? And you were looking at it, the up and down motion, it goes up quickly and then slows down, right? It starts off fast, meaning it starts off going up quick, right? So it blasts off fast, but then it slows down. It reaches this equilibrium point between rising and falling. So it starts to accelerate down, right? So it decelerates up and then accelerates down. And it reaches this high point halfway between the initial point where you started and the terminal point where this water particle hits the floor, basically. So if that's the case, that means that our V sub Y is going to be equal to zero. So for completeness, if you're in a Calc 3 class, physics guys, you guys can ignore this. If you don't want to see this, it's fine. Uh, I'm just going to derive the V sub Y really quick by starting off with the S of T. I'm trying to make this tutorial so that way it caters to everybody's needs. So you're familiar with this. Um, this would be the D, well, the delta X component. So this would be the uh, T V sub naught cosine theta. This would be I hat plus the T V sub naught sine theta plus one half G T squared. And this is going to be J hat. So this right here is your delta x, right? So this technically would be like your delta x or your distance, right? And this over here would be the delta y component, right? For now, I'm just going to erase these here. And then you would differentiate this here to get your v sub y, right? So which is what I'm, I'm just going to write it down, okay? And get rid of this right here. So the equations we're going to be dealing with, if you're in a physics class, you just want to write down the equations. It's going to be this v sub y is equal to, again, if you differentiate this thing, you'll get uh, V with respect to T. You'll get V sub naught sine theta plus G T, right? And then your delta X, which we're just gonna write as delta X, that's gonna be equal to this right here, T V sub naught cosine theta. All right, well, we know Delta X is 2.5, right? So that's 2.5 is equal to T V sub naught cosine theta. And we know that V sub Y is going to be equal to zero, right? Because the velocity reaches zero halfway over here, right? So what's happening so far now? Well, I've introduced a new variable time, right? So I know it takes a certain amount of time for the particle to travel along the X axis, right? And halfway during that time, it reaches this point here in the middle, right? Which is the same amount of time it takes for this equilibrium point to be equal to zero, right? That means the this equation here for it to be equal to zero. So that means that I could just isolate this t right here, right? Like this. I can write t is equal to, and this will be 2.5 over v sub naught cosine theta. And if I have half time, so that means I cut it in half, I could just, I guess, I guess to make this simple, I could just multiply this right here by one half when I plug it into right here, right? So this T would be equal to this T here. So let me go ahead and do that substitution. So I'll have V sub naught sine theta plus G times, now, I'm going to take half of this time here, right? Because this is the full amount of time it takes to make this in, this this path, right? From beginning, this initial point, all the way to this terminal point. So I'm going to take half of this time. So that'll be one half times 2.5 over V sub naught cosine theta, right? Okay. And this will be equal to zero. So it's this this equation right here is this equation right here. This t right here is this t, but I'm taking, but this t is the full amount of time. So I'm taking half of it, and so here it is. So now let me move, I guess I can move this right side of the equation to the right side here, right? Well, this over here to the other side of the equal sign. And this will be v sub naught sine of theta is equal to. I'm going to start plugging things in, okay? Like the negative 9.8 for this G right here, right? So this will be a negative times a negative 9.8. I'm going to leave off the units again. 
because uh, I'm trying to solve for theta, so I'm eventually going to end up with an angle, so the units are not going to matter right here. So this will be times, what do we have here? Uh, 2.5 over 2 V sub naught cosine theta. So the negatives cancel out, and I have this cosine theta on the right side, and if I move it to the left side, then I'll have something involving the theta, and if I divide by the V sub naught, then I'll have V sub naught on the bottom, right? And this turns out to be sine theta times cosine theta is equal to 9.8 times 2.5 all over, we're going to have, well, since we moved the cosine over to the other side, and we're moving the V sub naught down here, then we'll have 2v sub naught quantity squared, right? And so we've plugged everything in. Oh, notice this. This is a trig identity, right? All we're missing is the 2. So if we just multiply by 2 here and 2 here, then we have it, right? Meaning the left side's going to be sine of 2 theta, which is equal to... Now, you guys don't have to write everything out like I am. I'm doing this so that way you can check along the way if you have everything correct. So this will be 2 times 9.8 times 2.5. That looks like a plus 5, doesn't it? And don't forget the 2's cancel. Anyway, if you actually work this out right here, you're going to end up with 98 over 169, right? It's the same thing we got on the last problem. At this point here, I'm just going to stop the tutorial because we already know what the answer is going to be. I don't have to go through the same thing again. We already did what sine 2 theta. We already had a result. Sine 2 theta is equal to 98 over 169, and we found out there's two angles, so there's no need to continue. Yeah, this concludes everything. So all I wanted to do is just show you, you know, how you would go about this problem if you didn't know that range formula. Because I think the other one was just kind of like cookbook math. I'm not really into cookbook math, but... If you know it, you can use it. I suggest using it. It saves time on an exam. But this is the way you would go about this if uh, you're either in a physics class or in a Calc 3 class and you have to show some kind of work. Knowing how to do it this way is by far much more powerful than just memorizing a formula and just plugging stuff in. Things, trust me, things don't work like that when you get up into much higher level physics. So the last thing I would mention is this over here is the position vector, okay? So it's it describes where something is at with the i and j components, right? So this would be like your x and y, I guess you could think of it that way. And so this would be your delta x is your delta y. If you differentiate, then you'll get the v sub x, v sub y. So this would just be if you differentiated this, you get V sub naught cosine theta. And then this right here, I mean, I just already explained it. So, all right, guys. Well, that covers it. If this is all you needed, well, then we're good. So as always, good luck with your homework and tests in the future. And thank you for watching.